always to entertain you With music and laughter to help you on your way To raising the rafters with a hey, hey, hey With songs and sketches and jokes old and new With us about, you won't feel blue So meet the gang, cause the boys are here The boys to entertain you B-O-B-O-Y-S, boys to entertain you! Hey, Paderewski, what is it? <clears throat> if you was given an elegant candlelit dinner party for several prominent members of society and the cook was suddenly taken ill, what would you do? Send out for some fish and chips. <laughs> Aye! That's the obvious thing to do, isn't it? Hasn't he got it down here, though? What on earth are you reading? It's a chapter on dinner party etic... etic... <laughs> etiquette. <laughs> Here's another one. The best wine to serve with fish is a purely fussy. <laughs> but make sure it is at the right temperature. Now, how would you do that? Stick my finger in the glass. <laughs> You'd think so, wouldn't you? But that's not what it's got down here. That's the trouble that people that write their books. No common sense. Can you not fix it, Parky? No, nah, the left eye won't close. Some of it must be jammed. Here, let me have a go. Last. How can I add up these figures with all that noise going on? Tell Sutton to be quiet. Sutton, shut up! <laughs> My ear, Sergeant Major. Go over and tell him. Shut up! Do you want some, Sergeant Major? <laughs> What's the matter? Are you deaf or something? I told you to shut up. Sorry, Sergeant Major. I can't hear when I've got my own voice ringing in my head. There's no room for two voices in there. There's no room for any brains in there either. Now shut up. Captain Ash was trying to do the accounts. There you go, Parky. I reckon I fixed it. Oh! <laughs> you know what I said? Just shut up. <laughs> my eye! You've just smashed my poor little dummy's eye. What? You tried on it. <laughs> What's he doing on the ground? I I'm afraid it was my fault, Sergeant Major. Well, I, I was trying to mend it, it just popped out like. No, I see. It was his fault, not mine. How can I go on the stage with little Jungle Jim if he's only got one eye? <laughs> Me old ex ruined. Why? I didn't do it on purpose, did I? Yeah, but you did it all the same. I mean, how a sensitive artiste like us supposed to work under these conditions? <laughs> Watch it. How can a Parkins? There's no need to get upset over a dummy boy. Pull yourself together now, lovely boy. Shoulders back. Remember now he's a soldier? He doesn't understand. My dummy is part of me. Just a parky sa vase ki dummy. Ne kate hain chip of the old block. <laughs> what was all that about, Sergeant Major? I accidentally trod on Gunner Parkins' glass eye. I never knew Parkins only had one eye. <laughs> a dummy's eye, sir. Oh, I can't bother with all that. I've got quite enough problems here. These accounts were dead up. And what's wrong? Well, according to these figures. There should be 1,500 rupees in the float, but there's only 1,005. So that means there's 495 rupees missing. Well, are you sure you've added them up correct, sir? Yes, I've checked them half a dozen times. Well, I shouldn't worry. The Colonel sort it out when he comes back from GHQ tomorrow. No, I want to find out where the money's gone for myself. I don't want the Colonel to know. Why is that, sir? Well, I should have done these accounts after pay period last week, and I didn't. I was so upset about that letter. What letter is that, sir? It was uh, from my wife. Well, what's he say? Sidney Lazenb has been in the house again. <laughs> Who is uh, Sidney Lazenb? My next door neighbour. He was a frightful cat. <laughs> Wears suede shoes and smokes Turkish cigarettes. <laughs> real lounge lizard. Why is he not in the army? That's what I'd like to know. Anyhow, he's always leaning over my garden fence, making caddish remarks about my wife. Things like how pretty she is. Well, he sounds harmless enough, sir. Harmless? Harmless? He's been into my house to look at my wife's overflow. <laughs> Why didn't she get a plumber? That's what I want to do. 
Well, I'm sure you can trust her, sir. Well, I hope so. But after all, we're only human. She's a woman, I'm a man. We've been apart for two years. And I have to ask myself one question. What's that, sir? I've been tortured with it day and night. Well, what is the question? If one of these pretty Burmese girls asked me into her hut to look at her overflow, how would I behave? <laughs> like a gentleman, I expect. No. That's the problem. War is hell, Sergeant Major. Don't crack up now, sir. Are you sure that money's missing? Yes, according to these figures, there should be 495 rupees in there. It was in there, and somebody must have taken it out. There's no doubt about it, somebody's taken it out. Where do you keep that catch box, sir? Under my bed. Oh, do you think a loose wallet's got in? No, too many of us about. I'm afraid it must be an inside job, sir. One of our chaps? Oh, I can't believe it. There's one way to find out. I'll turn out their kit right oh, now. No, 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 no. That will create an awful atmosphere. Well, all right, sir. How'd it be if, uh, if you take them on a jungle run and keep them out of the place for, say, half an hour? All right, but let's get it over as quickly as possible. Right, sir. Get your rifles in your bayonets! Captain Ashwood is taking you for a jungle run. But this is their rehearsal time. I've still got to do my plays. I'm not interested in your filthy habits. Move yourself! I haven't finished my scales. Shut up! You're all puny and flabby. You need to get out in the fresh air. We are out in the fresh air, Sergeant Major. No, you was not, Mr. Lardy Dargana Graham. In you, you was in in the fresh air. Out there, you was out in the fresh air. <laughs> you look pasty faced. All of you need some colour in your cheeks. And you, Chowler, get that dirty hern. You're going as well. Sergeant Major, stop. I have very rosy cheeks. <laughs> Already, Sergeant Major? Talk, get up, right? Come on, come on, come on. Fall in, fall in. Stop rubbing these. Right, chaps, let's get ourselves wound up. You hop, hop, the officer said, wind yourselves up. Up, 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 up. Move it, move it, move it, move it. <laughs> How about a song to get us going, Bombardier? How about stout hearted men? <laughs> Excellent. You start us off. Give me some men who are stout hearted men <laughs> who will fight for the right they adore. Oh, oh. Start me with ten who are stout hearted men and I'll soon give you ten. Spend an evening. It's all right. Old Sharp's well away. He's snoring like a pig. Yeah, how much of that stuff did you put in his tea, Mohammed? Plenty. He will sleep like a baby until the morning. Yeah, Nobby. Go and get his box. Right, got it. Yeah. If we get caught going for old Sharp's box, we'll get into terrible trouble. Look, he made an excuse to get us out the way just so he could rifle our kit. And that gold pen your mum gave you for your 21st birthday is missing. What more evidence do you need? I don't know. He thinks I'm his son. Perhaps he pinched it for sentimental reasons. Aye, like money. <laughs> Where's his keys? Money, money, money. Everything all right? Yeah. But he keeps muttering the words uh, money, money in his sleep. That proves he's a crook. Yeah, well, we'll soon find out. Uh, perhaps we ought not to open it, eh? Look, until we find that pen, we can't prove a thing. Oh, let's see what we've got here. Adventures of Erotic Edna. Yeah. <laughs> That's the book he took off me. He said he was going to burn it. Well, the only burnings this book's had is from the Sergeant Major's eyes. <laughs> Further Adventures of Erotic Edna. Still further adventures of Erotic Edna. <laughs> Son of Erotic Edna. <laughs> she gets around a bit, doesn't she? The dirty minded pig. You just see, that's the sort of monster we've got in charge of us. A clean body and a clean mind. Oh, the bloomin' hypocrite. Hey, wait a minute, what's this? Only to be opened in the event of my death. It's addressed to you, Parky. Yeah. Oh, look, the, uh, the gun on the envelope's perished. Go on, read it out, read it out. I can't. 
It's addressed to you. It says only to be opened in the event of old shut up's death. I can soon fix that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't stand it. I must know what's in that letter. <clears throat> Dear son, I'll call you that, even though I'm not sure if you are my boy or not. Perhaps it's just as well that now I'll never know. So as I go on my way to report to that great battery office in the sky, <laughs> to you I leave all my worldly possessions. My silver top cane and my life savings, 43 pounds, eight and six, <laughs> which is in the Portcullis Building Society. <laughs> this should give you a good start in life. Good luck, my lovely boy. Don't forget, shoulders back and stand up straight. Love, your old dad. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, sorry I treated your mates so hard. But I only wanted to make soldiers out of them. They're good lads at heart, especially little Lofty. <laughs> Nobby, it's your turn to go on guard. Oh, by the way, Parky, I forgot to give you your pen back. You lent it to me yesterday. Sunny <laughs> <laughs> side up, up, hide the side that gets blue. Ciao, ciao, Walla, in a row. Yes, sir, give me up. Take the other gun, charge, Oldie. Take us up. One hot cup of delicious tea. Coming up. What happened to you, Sergeant Major? It's ten o'clock. I'm sorry, sir. I seem to have slept late. Oh, you've never done that before. You've missed breakfast, I'm afraid. I don't want any breakfast, sir. I got a mouth like the inside of a tram driver's glove. <laughs> I checked these figures again last night. That money's still missing. It must have been in there and somebody's taken it out. I'm so relieved you didn't find it in the chap's kit. Still got to search their bodies yet, sir. Well, how will you do that? Leave it to me, sir. Get on parade! Could I borrow your uh, magnifying glass, sir? Yes, of course. Thank you, sir. Come on, come on. Now, some from ease. Contain! Turn that ice! Right. Now, strip off and drop your clothes behind you. I, think I said strip off and drop your clothes behind you, buddy, buddy! <laughs> How to make you? Why well, have we got to take our clothes off? I want to have a look at your bumps. My bumps? <laughs> Prickly heat inspection. It's the first time I've ever heard it called that. Shut up. Joe Walla, Punker Walla. Drop it at the end of the line. Come on, you as well. Strip off. Viva la France. I've always had my suspicions about him. <laughs> Shut up. Here we are. Thank you, sir. What on earth are you going to do, Sergeant Major? Well, I shall inspect them for prickly heat bumps, sir. And you get behind them and search their clothing. I see. That's awfully clever. Thank you, sir. <laughs> right. Nice front. Arms up. May I ask what you're looking for, Sergeant Major? May I ask what you're looking for, Sergeant Major? Well, I will tell you, Mr. Larkin Arganogram, I was looking to see if your prickly heat bumps is going sceptic. <laughs> may I ask what Captain Ashwood is doing behind me? No, you may not. Just look to your front. Just to remind your P's and Q's, Graham, you're getting far too uppity. Sorry, sir. <laughs> Can you see anything unusual, Sergeant Major? <laughs> Yes, you. Look to your front. Could you please ask Captain Ashwood if I've got anything to worry about behind? <laughs> You've got everything to worry about behind. In front and all around for 400 degrees. I thought there were only 360 degrees. You've got an extra 40. Shut up. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm, we're going to Parkins. Beautiful, beautiful. 
Your shoulders looks even better under glass. Got some ingrowing hairs on my chest. Is it serious? Yes. It's gone right through your body. <laughs> you could end up with an airy art. <laughs> your chest looks very red, Macintosh. It's just a colour dinks half the tattoo, Sergeant Major. Hey, there's some wee writing at the bottom of that tattoo. It's too weak to be seen by the naked eye. Can you make out what it says? I've never found out. Where do you have this done? It's Glasgow. It took four hours. And the pain, the pain was terrible. But I never moved a muscle. What's it say? He cried like a baby. <laughs> What's that? It's tea leaves. <laughs> You were going on a long journey. <laughs> Dash mash, move yourselves! Sure. I take it you didn't find anything, sir? No. What do we do now? What was all that about? Don't ask me, I think. Wait a minute. Oh, no. What's the matter? Well, he wanted us to lift their arms. Well, what about it? Well, oh, that prickly eat rubbish was just an excuse. What for? So we could look under our arms. What for? Lamps! What lamps? Bubonic plague! <laughs> We've got to search each other, Sergeant Major. We must eliminate all suspects. Yes, sir. Perhaps you care to peruse my box first. Bubonic plague. I've never heard such rubbish in all my life. It's not rubbish. They didn't say nothing because they didn't want us to panic. The first sign of bubonic plague is Lamps under the arms. Then you go black and fall down dead. <laughs> now, shut up. I've got something there. I can feel it. Feel what? Lamps! Lamps! <laughs> There's nothing there. Don't do that, I'm tickling. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You're supposed to be worried. <laughs> oh, I am worried. <laughs> I'm worried to death. <laughs> Well, there's nothing in your box, Sergeant Major, so you're in the clear. Oh, by the way, who's erotic Edna? <laughs> well, she's a, a sort of lady detective, sir. Oh, you mean like Agatha Christie's Miss Marple? Sort of travels the world on the job. <laughs> you could say that, sir. <laughs> when you've done that, we'd better examine each other. We'd better pretend to examine our bodies for prickly heat. We don't want the chaps to get suspicious. Are you sure there's nothing there? Nothing at all. Oh. Well, I'd say, sir. Nothing in your box. I suppose we'd better just search our clothing. Yes. I don't think it's necessary for us to take our trousers off. Why not, sir? Well, it stands to reason. I mean, 500 rupees would be a large bundle of notes. If either of us had anything as big as that in our trousers, everyone would notice. <laughs> What a relief. You know, for a moment, I... Look. I was right. Look at him. I'm very worried as well. I have got lamps. I can feel it. I don't want to die. I'm just a boy. Ah! Is there no escape from this green hell? I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Ah! Get him out of the sun, chaps. Go on. Out of the sun. <laughs> well, Sergeant Major, we've searched the men. And we searched ourselves. So none of us took it out. But somebody took it out. Just a minute. There's only one person besides me who has a key to that cash box. And that person locked it and handed it to me. And that person is the only person we haven't searched. Afternoon, Ashford. Afternoon, Sergeant Major. Sure. We must search his box tonight. Money is the root of all evil. Are you sure, Mohammed? Oh, yes, sir. Ramzan woke up in the night and saw the captain sub and the sergeant major sub searching the colonel sub's box. And they found hundreds and hundreds of rupees. Keep your voice down. We don't want them to hear. What did Captain Ashwood say? Sub, bad detective, Bola. 
The man is an absolute bounder. <laughs> oh, they said the Colonel Saab had stolen the money from the payroll sink. Float your book. <laughs> of course, it all fits in. That, all that rubbish about prickly heat inspection was just an excuse to search us for the missing money. Oh, what a relief not to have bubonic plague. <laughs> what a terrible night. Oh, I've had all these dreams that I was dying. Suddenly the world is a beautiful place. I'm so glad the Colonel's a thief. <laughs> the best news I've had. Sorry, I missed the show yesterday. How'd you go? Uh, not bad, sir. What's the matter with you two this morning? You've hardly said a word. I find you both very boring. <laughs> I'm going inside to write home to my wife, which will be even more boring. <laughs> but at least I should be in the shade. That was the most awful meal I've ever had in my life. There's no doubt about it, sir. The Colonel definitely took that money. But this is terrible. I mean, he's an ex-public school man. An old Pauline. And he's betrayed his trust. All my illusions are shattered, Sergeant Major. There's only one thing for it. I shall have to have it out with him that he took it out. Confront him eyeball to eyeball now. It's the only way, sir. Yes, the only way. I'll give him one last chance to put it back. But if he doesn't, I shall have no alternative but to inform the military police. Uh, you'd better keep the chaps busy in their butter. Sure. Right, stand by your chop, boys! Kit Inspector! Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes, what is it? Could I have a word with you? I hope you're not going to be boring. <laughs> it's rather important. Yes? I, I find this very difficult to say, but I must get it off my chest. You mean about Sidney Lazenby and your wife's overflow? <laughs> You've been reading my letters. You're an even bigger cat than I thought. Well, you left it on the bed and I was a bit bored. Oh! <laughs> you're bored, were you? I wonder if you'll still be bored when you hear what I've got to say. Yes, quite probably. <laughs> right. You asked for it. You took it out, didn't you? As soon as my back is turned, you took it out. <laughs> Do you catch my drift? Not really, no. <laughs> Don't bother to deny it. You took it out, all right. And you know that I know that you know that you took it out. <laughs> Do I make myself clear? Well, I think... No, I mean, it's probably not the first time you've done it. I mean, uh, perhaps it was the heat or... Maybe you did it for the excitement, or to break the monotony. But I'm going to give you a chance to make amends. If we'd been out here 50 years ago, I wouldn't have done that. Do you know what I'd have done? I have no idea. Left a loaded revolver on the table in your bungalow, and you'd have known what to do with it. Uh, would I? Well, I know where you're keeping it. I know where it is, and so do you. So I'm going to turn my back, and if you put back what you took out, that'll be the end of the matter. Would you mind saying all that again? <laughs> so you're going to bluff it out, are you? Then you leave me no alternative. Take it out, put it back. What on earth is he talking about? <laughs> oh, that! A uh, sergeant major. Oh. Uh, Captain Ashwood wants me to put it back. Why, uh, I should, sir. Well, what on earth for? I mean, finders as keepers. As a matter of fact, I was going to use that 500 rupees to give the men a party. A party, sir? Yes, why not? After all, I mustn't keep that money to myself. Let's see what the men have to say. Get them on parade room. You're going to tell them, sir? Well, of course. Get them on parade room. I, I hope you know what you're doing, sir. Jump right! Oh, go on! Captain Ashwood wanted me to clean his revolver or something. I've never heard anything like it. <laughs> Right, Captain, listen. Now, last week, when I was on my way back from GHQ, I found a parachute in the road, obviously left over from an airlift. Well, I sold that parachute to the head man of Fung Yu Village. Apparently, they use the silk for making ladies, uh, what's his name, and that sort of thing. <laughs> anyway, he gave me 500 rupees for it. And the point is, I'd like to use this money to give you a party. Do you agree? Oh, fine. Well, that's all settled then. Carry on, Sergeant Major. 
The Colonel didn't pinch the money after all, then. <laughs> what did you say, Sugden? Uh, nothing, Sergeant Major. Yes, you did out with it. We found out that you and Captain Ashwood went through the Colonel's drawers last night. <laughs> <laughs> Then we cross, Sergeant Major. I mean, we've all been very upset. I mean, what with my lamps and the missing money and everything. I mean, these last 24 hours have been sheer hell. But now everything's all right. Everything is not all right. According to the accounts, the money is still missing. Uh, perhaps I could be of some assistance, Sergeant Major. It's all quite simple. Captain Ashwood made an entry of five rupees in the wrong column and added up 500 rupees instead. That's why he thought the 495 rupees were missing. Give me that. Well, that's nice. Not so much as a thank you. <laughs> Colonel Reynolds, sir. Yes, what is it? There he is. Arrest that man. What on earth? Excuse me, sir. Not now, Sergeant Major. Arrest that man. Sir, would you mind looking at these accounts? The accounts, sir. What? The accounts, the accounts. <laughs> Sergeant, would you mind telling me what on earth is going on? Captain Ashwood has made a very serious charge against you, sir. Oh, what sort of charge? Well, sir. Oh, oh. oh I say, I am a fool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally afraid, Sergeant. I, I've made a wrong mistake here. I mean, I withdraw all the charges. I didn't want to say, sir. I'm most terribly sorry. Can you ever forgive me? You shocked me, Ashwood. <laughs> <laughs> we were a good team, you and I, and you went and shocked me. Well, our friendship is over. Things will never be the same again. <laughs> to think you could ever suspect me of doing anything underhand. <laughs> all right, Sergeant, you can go. It's all right. That's a relief, sir. I don't like doing this sort of thing. We had to arrest a colonel only last week, sir. Yeah? What for? Selling parachutes to the Burmese. <laughs> <laughs> what are you on about? I mean, uh, used parachutes is no good. Army property, Sergeant Major. This colonel was selling them for 5,000 rupees each. I thought they were only worth 500. <laughs> no, no, I just heard. That was all. <laughs> don't you believe it, sir. There's a hell of a lot of silk in them. They'll stand for court martial, of course, sir. Goodbye, sir. Uh, listen, chaps, the party is cancelled. Uh, Ashwood, I've got to go over to Fung Yu Village to see the head man. I've got to buy a parachute. <laughs> I wonder if that chap would take a check. <laughs> Boys to entertain you. 